Uh, my name is Tom Lockhart. Been blowing glass for a little over 30 years, but we've been uh, in business for the one-eared cow almost 29 years. So it'll be 29 years coming up next year. So we make uh, all kinds of stuff. So we're we're a business, and we have customers come in that want to buy things retail, whether it's for gifts for, for somebody or for their home. So we have to offer a very wide range of things uh, that are available all the time. And then on top of that, of course, we do uh, corporate gifts. We do sculpture. Um, just really a very wide gamut of whatever somebody throws at us, we usually try to figure out a way to do it. Ornaments, Christmas ornaments, of course it's that time of year, uh, it's always seasonal. Um, vases, bowls, uh, outdoor items, whether it's just like a flower or something, or even outdoor lighting. Uh, we do, speaking of lighting, we do a lot of indoor lighting, like pendant lighting, chandeliers, things for kitchens and uh, hallways and things like that. So the process of uh, glass blowing is, first of all, you need fire. So we need something that, that maintains about a 2100 degree uh, inside temperature, uh, which is the furnace. We'll have that running all the time. And inside of that is a ceramic crucible, which holds all of the clear molten glass. So we have molten clear glass ready to go at any time of the day, all day long, 24 hours a day. Um, and what we do is we take metal pipes and at the tip of the pipe, we'll heat it up and we'll dip it down into the molten glass and we'll get a little bit of clear molten glass out and start manipulating it, blowing it. Uh, in order to add the color and pattern, we do that outside, but we basically melt in colored glass, uh, heat it up, melt it to it, uh, draw designs, etc. And as we're working with all of that and melting it in and blowing it and stretching it, it becomes part of the piece itself. Depending on what you're making, it takes anywhere from five minutes to a few hours to make something. Uh, it's a fairly quick uh, process. If you're spending two hours on a piece, it's because it's extremely heavy and, and uh, laborsome. Uh, by the time you're done with a two-hour piece, you're, you're pretty worn out. Uh, it all has to be done kind of fast because the heat is dissipating from the glass itself and when it gets to a certain temperature, uh, it'll start to make the glass crack. So we have to maintain uh, a specific temperature throughout the piece, whether it's a thicker, thicker part of the piece or a thinner part of the piece, it all has to be about the same. And when those uh, guidelines get a little weird, uh, then you start running into problems of cracking. So the longer you're working on something, the greater chance there is that you're going to wind up cracking it or, or losing the piece in the process. Uh, once we get through making the piece, then we have to put it in a holding oven that's about 940 degrees and then depending on how thick the piece actually was, we will gradually cool it down with a computer control back to room temperature to again take the stress out so it doesn't cool too quickly and, and explode. When we moved out into the country, it was just a rusty old tin building that had a whole bunch of antiques and, and everything you could imagine uh, that crawls into or lives in a rusty old tin building in the middle of the country. We were cleaning up and building the equipment. We found a little wooden cow's head that was missing an ear. Somebody had hand carved it. It was that obvious. And nobody knew the origin of it or anything, but we nailed it to the, to the barn entry door that we made. And we finally got to the part in business where we had to come up with an actual name. We were done kind of getting things organized and getting the studio built and stuff and said, all right, well, we got to start the, the legal aspect of it all. What's the name of the business? And we were trying to come up with all kinds of things that just didn't make any sense whatsoever. And then we walked in one day and, and one, of the, uh, one of the partners said, uh, one-eared cow, because he was right there in front of us every time we walked through the door. And uh, it just was part of the process of going out there and finding things and making use of everything that we could find and uh, that, that was one of the one of the useful items actually and it became became our mascot and lended itself to the name of the studio.